be talking with the people in the camera too. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes, speak loud too because of okay. the fans. Should be good to go. All right. There you go. So if you don't know me, I'm Jake Lewandowski. I'm a senior this year studying atmospheric and oceanic sciences. And I just want to talk to you a little bit today about my experiences uh, at the National Weather Service uh, this summer with the student volunteer opportunity in uh, Milwaukee and Sullivan. So I'm going to walk you through like what I learned about the National Weather Service and uh, what I did during the uh, student volunteer opportunity, and then give you a little bit of information on how you can apply if you're interested. So what it is, the opportunity allows for uh, undergraduate or graduate students to gain experience at a National Weather Service office. And so I'm going to be mainly focusing on the Sullivan and Milwaukee office, but it's offered at pretty much every single office. So the, main, the four main services that they provide would be uh, severe weather watches and warnings, uh, forecasting surface and upper air conditions, providing hydrological forecasts, and uh, providing climatological forecasts and data. Now the structure of the National Weather Service, is, there's the uh, main headquarters in DC, and you got the six regional offices and 122 weather forecast offices. And so I was at the Milwaukee Sullivan office, which is, is there most? the one that's that, that little blue dot right there, that's where I was, which is like, it's kind of the main office for Wisconsin, and it's responsible for um, the area that you see highlighted right there, the, the county warning area called the CWA. One thing you'll learn is that the National Weather Service loves loves to use acronyms for everything, so if you have any questions on my acronym, just ask me. Um, and it's also responsible for forecasting all of uh, Lake Michigan. So the Milwaukee, every office is a little different with their structure of forecasters. Um, this is the Milwaukee's office structure. They have the nine general forecasters who do like the daily forecasts. Um, they'll be answering phone calls all day, creating social media posts, uh, issuing warnings. Uh, you got the you got five senior forecasters who do all the same things as the uh, general forecasters, except they're more like administrative, and so like they're responsible for issuing like overtime and stuff like that. Uh, you have electronic technicians who repair and maintain all the electrical equipment. You got your service hydrologist uh, who maintains all the hydrology gauges and will issue more of the hydrological forecasts and warnings. Uh, the OPL, the Observing Programming Leader, he's in charge of pretty much the data collection network for the office. So all the uh, travels across the region, maintains like a network with people, builds relationships with people, and um, just make sure they know what they're make sure they know what they're doing with observing. So a couple more positions you have the uh, ECA electronic systems administrator who mean, just ma basically manages all the electronic equipment, and you have the ITO who manages the computer equipment. It's more of like a, a computer science uh, variation as opposed to the ESA. Uh, the administrative support assistant, which is more of just the general administrative duties of the office. Uh, the CERT science and operations officer who is responsible for training and does a little bit of the scientific research for the office. And that's the science operations officer is also who you're gonna probably work with for the um, uh, internship. That would be uh, John Gagan at the National Weather Service if you know him. Um, then the last two are the warning coordination meteorologists who coordinates the warning function of the office, surprisingly. And uh, he's responsible for spotter training through the Skywarn network. He's also the voice of the office uh, for interviews and media. And then last but not least, you got the meteorologist in charge, who's like the head honcho, just makes sure everything's running efficiently at the office, keeps it staffed, and responsible for all the products that the office is providing. So there's like 20, I want to say there's like 24 people at this office, and these 24 people are responsible for keeping this office staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all holidays, always. So it can get a little tight at times, but they somehow make it work. So I want to walk you through like what I learned with like the daily tasks for the forecasters in the office. So the main thing they do is they, they create the grids. So they'll use a variety of programs that you might be familiar with, like Pivotal, SPF, Ahrefs, uh, Weatherbell, maybe um, College of DuPage. They all have their favorite thing that they like to use. And uh, they use that to get a kind of a general idea about the weather. And then they'll use their, uh, their proprietary software called AWIPS, which I'll talk to you more about later. Um, to build their uh, weather grid, which is just like a grid of all the weather uh, data, and they uh, just forecast it. Um, and so they'll write a forecast discussion, which is just a couple paragraphs out out outlining why they forecasted what they did and what their thought process was. And then throughout the day, they're going to keep an eye on the grids and 
if it's getting a little bit too far off, they're going to update their grids just to make sure that they're not that their uh, weather program is or their weather is verifying correctly. So other forecasts they'll do is the climatological forecast, aviation forecast, marine fire weather, hydrological. And there's a bunch more that they're all responsible for. And throughout the day, they're also going to be answering phones, uh, making social media posts. Outreach is a huge, huge part of the National Weather Service, and that's kind of one of the main things that I learned. And I, I could, I'll touch more on that later. And throughout the day, they're also going to be working on their individual projects because they all have their own little specialties, and they work on projects throughout the year, and they'll present them to the office eventually. So that was the previous slide was like a typical day, but there's also severe weather days, which are not typical. So typically, they're going to know ahead of time when if there's going to be like potential for severe weather, and they'll make sure the office is super well staffed. They're going to. Uh, the SBC could have informed that there's a tornado watch. So the SBC will contact all the stations in the forecast area, and they'll just like have them coordinate together in order to figure out where the actual tornado watch is going to be. So then they, they might issue a possible tornado watch. Um, and so there's different roles that are assigned for people on a severe weather day. You got a couple people on radar, which is responsible for looking at the radar, just keeping their eyes on it all the time, watching the latest updates, and being ready to issue any warnings. Uh, you got people that are answering phone calls because you get a ton of phone calls on these severe weather days. Uh, making social media posts, keeping people informed. Uh, you'll have people scanning for storm reports and making sure everybody's up to date with what's actually happening with the storm, what's verifying. And you've got somebody looking at the hydro hydrology aspect of it, who's like seeing if there's any flash floods, if they need to issue any flood warnings. And it's this is my, my first day at the office was a severe weather day. This is the, that's the loop right there. I was on uh, June 15th, and um, yeah, it was hectic. It was, uh, yeah, it was, a little, it was a little rough. I can talk more about that later. But um, yeah, very high intensity, but it also could be very rewarding too. So like I mentioned before, they use a soft, they use software called AWIPS. This was probably the most important thing that I touched on at this uh, internship opportunity. And so this is just a kind of like an all-in-one program with you can do satellite, radar, you can have real-time observations on it, you can have forecast models on it, it combines, it's super configurable, it's very convenient, everybody uses it there, and uh, it's what you'd use to input your weather grids, you know, uh, you're able to, you can pick your base models, you can blend models together to pick what you like, and then you can literally go in and like draw on your grids to, if you don't like the models perfectly, you might uh, draw on them to update them a little bit. You can use it, that's what you use also to issue warnings, the big red button at the top of the screen that they told me do not press that button. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's like the, it's probably the most important thing that they taught me at the National Weather Service was uh, getting used to using this AOS program, because that's what you're going to be primarily using for as a career with forecasting at the National Weather Service. So like I said before, one thing that I didn't really realize before coming into this is how much of an emphasis there was on communication. So yeah, communication is key for this office. And this, the Milwaukee office is a bit more like progressive than the other offices when it comes to communications. Like some other offices are a little bit old fashioned. They'll just, they'll do their grids, they'll post them to their website, then at the NWS website, and then that's it. Well, our office likes to make tons of social media posts. We experiment with like new graphic designs. Like these are just some that I pulled off their Twitter. Uh, they'll go out and like form relationships with local municipalities. Like the, they'll talk to them and they'll make sure that they know we're real people at the National Weather Service. Well, they're real people at the National Weather Service and like they can trust them and they can actually use them as a resource, make sure they understand like what we're saying. Um, we offer, uh, they offer decision support services, DSS, which if you're like, if you're like a local community hosting an event, you can request a DSS uh, for the site and the uh, National Weather Service will monitor that site, uh, call with updates on any weather phenomenon going on, just let them know. And even for the for the bigger events, they'll actually send like a, a person from the office to be on site at the place, like the state fair or bigger concerts and stuff like that. And then we also do media, a lot of media interviews. That was mainly mainly Tim does the media interviews. You know Tim, um, but like people will be will be coming in the office and like talking to you. If somebody came in and talked to me, so we are very open and public, and outreach is very important for uh, the National Weather Service of Milwaukee at least. So uh, there's also weather observations that are they oversee. There's a few programs that they oversee for observations. Uh, 
cooperative observer program, which is in our area, we have 68 locations. Uh, the OPL, which is the uh, operations program leader, I told you tons of acronyms, too many. Um, he will like drive around to all these people, ensure that their uh, temperature gauges are, are proper, ensure that everything is like uh, everything is just proper and working. The observers know what they're doing. We also have Coco Raz, which is something that the public can sign up for, where you buy a rain gauge and you uh, report your uh, readings to the actual National Weather Service. Uh, and every day there's quality assurance checks on the actual observation data just to make sure that, you know, that our data is like somewhat reasonable. So I'll walk you through some of the things that I did at the National Weather Service uh, as part of the volunteer opportunity. Uh, for the first couple of days, it was mainly just shadowing. Shadowed everything, shadowed them making forecasts, shadowed them creating their graphics. I got to sit down with most people and talk to them about their individual like specialties. And then, like I said, the first day was the severe weather. Very, I was like a, kind of like a fly on the wall that day because it was very intense. But it was a very, very good opportunity, very interesting to see. And it's definitely, it's not that like stressful every time. It's just those occasional days when you have it. Um, so I did a lot of AWIPS training, which I uh, became comfortable with that forecasting software. It's a very, very useful program, way better than Genpack, no offense. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's probably, the, like I said, probably the most important thing for uh, your career at National Weather Service is AWIPS. Uh, one of the early things I did was I uh, shadowed a tabletop exercise, which is when we went to the University of Whitewater, University of Wisconsin Whitewater, and we did this like emergency weather preparedness event. So what we did at, at the National Weather Service was we created this like event, like we said, okay, we created like a, an EF, I think it was an EF2 tornado that would go through Whitewater's main campus during summer, and then there was like a children's summer camp, <laughs> kind of dark, but uh, we, we sat down with, uh, we created the scenario, and then we sat down in a room with like the heads of uh, the police force, and the deans, just people from campus, government officials, sat down at all these tables, and then we, walked, we talked through like what their emergency response would be. And it was just a really important event for like, for us seeing how our information is interpreted, the National Weather Service's information would be interpreted by the public, and it, for us to gain feedback on how we can better like present our messaging to people, and and outreach, it's just like how important outreach was for this, uh, for the National Weather Service. So continuing on, I got to sit in with the regular training, it's, it's still learning stuff, learning doesn't end at the National Weather Service, like I sat down and we did some training with using core Phoebe vectors to diagnose uh, MCS storm motions. Um, so I'm training with radar configurations and how you could change them depending on uh, conditions of the atmosphere, like what's, uh, how you can, uh, like adjusted for different blind spots in your radar. Um, I went on the road with the OPL, which is the guy who keeps track of all the uh, the storm data, or keeps track of all the observation data and the observers. And like we went to all these different like radars and rain gauges and just made sure that they were all like proper and up to date. We installed a lightning rod one time. He we get dirty and like actually through digging stuff. Yeah, and you got to talk to people and make sure that they knew what they were doing for uh, their observations. Clean throttles and rain gauges, yeah. And then on-site DSS, I got to also shadow that. I went to the State Fair with uh, one of the NWS people and we um, provided graphics and information on all the incoming, any, any incoming weather. Fortunately, there was none that day. There was just, like, just a little bit of rain. But we got to sit there and uh, just help out. We, we provided like these little forecasts for the people at the National Weather Service. If there was a day where there was like more severe weather, we would have been like very, very heavily involved with like providing a lot more information. But it was definitely just very cool to see. And then I also, near the end of it, I started actually assisting in forecasting, like actually like helping out making the grids and uh, writing some area forecast discussion. That's one that I wrote. Um, so I wrote a short term and I wrote a long term one. They're just pretty short little summaries about the weather. And uh, it was definitely a really great experience. Kind of nerve-wracking to write it and then to be judged by all these like actual meteorologists. <laughs> but it was still a really cool experience. All right, so some information on how you can apply. They, that's the website right there. They don't, have the, the, uh, they don't have it posted yet for this next upcoming summer. But the due date will typically be near the end of March. 
um, it'll be open to any undergraduates or graduates, and it doesn't hurt for anybody to apply. Even if you like, you're, you're a freshman, you don't think you're gonna get in, apply, like get, get your name out there. That was probably the most important thing I did, because I, I applied years before, and I had been keeping in contact with people at the National Weather Service. Get your name out there, make sure they know who you are, so when that time comes and they see your name, you're like, oh, I know this guy, let's, let's give him a chance. That's definitely probably the most important thing you can do. And it's very easy to apply, it's just a resume and a cover letter, it doesn't take too much time. So I would say just definitely apply even if you don't think there's a chance you're looking for getting into it. And if you have any more questions, you can email me or if anybody has questions right now, you can ask me. And uh, that's all I got. Any questions? Yes. Um, this is really cool. Um, so how many interns are in a typical office? Like, were you the only one? Or was there was two. 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 It was me and uh, Nate, if you know. If you remember Nate Faulkner. Yeah, yeah. yeah, me and Nate were the two interns, so it's kind of cool that I, I knew yeah. him. Yeah, they had two positions. I think they generally are going to have two. Okay. I'm not sure if it's the same for every office, but I know ours had two. Anything else? It's interesting to hear you talk about AWIPS because we do actually have access you to a, kind of okay. a crippled version. Okay. Um, Unidata provides us with AWIPS, and there's an EDEX server downstairs. Mm -hmm. So we can run it. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't have the like issue in grids. Sure. Or, I mean, maybe it has a modification of, you know, or some of what you were talking about, blending mm -hmm. models and stuff. Um, I've played around with it a little bit. I've found it to be exceedingly slow. Okay, it is kind of slow. Uh, I found it to be very challenging to figure out, but it would be really interesting to get, you know, either you or somebody from the Weather Service mm -hmm. to come out and show us how to use it or what we need to know. And I know Unidata has some tutorials out there that I haven't taken mm -hmm. advantage of, but um, it's, it's just interesting to, to hear your emphasis of that and the fact that we're not really using it at all here. Yeah. Maybe we want to try to figure some of that out and incorporate at least how to use it, if not you know for case studies or anything, but just sort of an overview of it yeah, for okay. people that are interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something I could talk to them about too. I'm just like asking if they have any advice on mm -hmm. ways that we could you know, right. utilize it here. I believe that um, with the National Weather Service, uh, the, whenever you actually apply for a job there, if you don't have experience with it, they won't even consider your application. So that's how competitive they can be. Which is why these types of volunteer opportunities are so important. Because this is what gets you that experience. Otherwise, you, you will, your application won't make it better. Right. So, Jake, great job. Thank you. Thank Was there anything else besides AWIPS that you feel like we could implement into what we're doing that would be helpful for people that are interested in going into the National Weather Service? I mean, like I, like I said before, one of the biggest things we're looking for also is just people that can people that can properly communicate the weather to people, like people that can talk to people. <laughs> Like, yeah, like when we went to these tabletop exercises, we were going there, shaking our hands, introducing yourself to everybody. You gotta actually be able to like, talk to people, form relationships with people. That's like one of the most important things that that office is stressing. So I think the, the communication aspect of it might be something to emphasize more too for people who are interested in the weather, at, or in the weather service. Yeah. yeah, it was good to see that there's more, more communication mm -hmm. and social media than we thought, mm -hmm. and like how, you know, that can only grow, I guess. Yeah. So for the internship, it's yeah. uh, what I did was one day a week, eight hours. But you could, oh. it's very, very, very flexible. Like you can do, uh, you can do as many days as one a week as you want. You can come in for four hours, come in one day for like well, six hours, or whatever. It's it's these they're very very flexible. You there. Get the weekends off? You can pick. Like I just oh. picked out where I worked in. Um, I worked on Wednesdays. Typically that was my day to come in. But it's when if you're at like a, if you have a job or whatever, they'll work around your job. It's a very flexible opportunity. It's not paid, it's unpaid. I should have said that somewhere. It's still a really good experience. So that's nice because then you need communion. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about living there. Right, right. I you, did you commute from... I, I, mean, I, I live like somewhat in the area. Um, I know Nate, I think Nate commuted from Madison actually. Okay. And it was like pretty reasonable to do. So if you're in Madison, it's a, it's a reasonable commute. I think it's like maybe 35, 40 minute drive from Madison. Oh. 
It's not too bad. So it's not like in Milwaukee, it's like... No, no, it's not. It's in Sullivan, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is like kind of between here and Milwaukee, I'd say. Yeah. Are you able to apply to like, like multiple locations? Um, I, I am not sure. I feel like you could. Like, I think you could probably just throw an application out to like La Crosse, Green Bay, and Milwaukee if you wanted to. Yeah, because it's like, they're all like separate things done through each of these separate offices. It's not like one like, like program where you apply to as many as you want. You got to do them separately for each office. Now, even the other offices might have different like requirements for the application. I haven't looked into those offices as much, so I'm, I'm sure you could apply to the other ones too. Yeah. Are you glad you did it? I am very glad I did it. It was a great experience. <laughs> recommend, highly recommend to anybody. All right. Good. All right. Thank, Thank you. Job. Thanks for your time.